a perfect historical Airbnb. There were at least 50 people, Airbnb hosts looking at this, asking for the inspections, doing the due diligence. So we got to figure out how many offers from short-term rental fans did she get? My phone is ringing nonstop with people asking about short-term rentals, but. Alrighty folks, last week, we learned about a listing that Beth Traverso had that is a perfect historical Airbnb. It's a cabin. There were at least 50 people, Airbnb hosts looking at this, asking for the inspections, doing the due diligence. So we got to figure out how many offers from short-term rental fans did she get? Is it in contract? What's going on? So ah. what do you, what do you got? Hi everybody. Yeah. So the, the, the cabin listing that we're talking about is a cabin house and uh, outside the Seattle area. So up in the mountains, close to the ski resorts, et cetera, a nice vacation destination. Although it's not just those folks living out there, of course, there's, there's people that are living there year round. Um, but it was a stampede out there um, in the woods. We had my phone is ringing nonstop with people asking the number one question I was being asked by everybody was about short-term rentals and are they allowed there? And the answer was, yes, they're, they're what they are, they are allowed there. And there are about 20 plus actively being marketed that way in that community. So I tell you something there too, like there's already 20 in this small community. Hmm. How much demand is there for more of these? Right. But so I wasn't really sure how many, given what's been going on with Airbnb, how much interest there would be. I knew there would be some, but it it blew the doors off with everyone going out there wanting to buy these this property for a short term rental. Mm -hmm. um, but when the time came, none of them made offers. It is pending now. We did get multiple offers, but we got zero from the wow. Airbnb hosts. Mm -hmm. Um and it did end up selling to somebody who's owner occupying. So well, there you we go. did get multiple offers from owner occupants. So that's a big shift from what I would have expected and what would be yeah. normal historically. Usually when I get that much interest, it's going to, I would have expected that level of interest to equate to maybe five plus offers, probably from the mm. short term rental folks. Um, now, but, again, I don't know this area at all. I don't own any short term rentals. So these may be silly questions, but I'm going to ask anyway. So you talked about the area already having 20 listings. I mean, is this a is this an area of like 200 homes or like 2000 or 20,000? I mean, oh, probably what, closer to 200 than to, you know, definitely not 1000. Okay. Maybe so we're talking we're we're talking a healthy percentage. I, you know, yeah. 20 out of 200, that's 10%. Mm -hmm. At 10%. Yeah. Yeah. So And it's an area uh, that's a little bit it's way out there. It's off miles of dirt road and oh, very rustic location. So um, it has character. So has care. It has character. It's an adorable, charming, charming home. So there's a lot to nice. love about it. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it. I think once people ran the numbers, they were probably surprised because if the rates are now, you know, they were, the numbers may have worked before prices skyrocketed a couple of years ago when you could be in 2021, when you could purchase at 3% and yeah. your price was 25% lower than it is now, for example. And now yeah. the prices are, it doesn't cash flow. No. So, and I do own one Airbnb that we've talked about. It's in a different location in a different part of the Cascade Mountains, but, and it's a little more of a developed area that's been a vacation destination for decades. Um, we bought ours in 2017 and it cash flows up decently, but we bought it mostly as a second home for our family to enjoy. And if somebody else can pay for it, all the better, you know, that's a good way to go. But um, what they, one of one, a house in our community went up for sale for, we'll just call it a million nine ninety five, And it's been sitting there for a little while. And there were others that were selling for that price not too long ago. However, if you look at your mortgage, just in basic terms, it's going to be around 65, 6,600 a month. Yeah. And that doesn't count your management fees, your utilities, your internet, all the incidentals, Insurance. everything yeah. else, yeah. all that stuff. It'd be very, very challenging to make that cash flow. So it's cash buyers be buying those, people who just want to park cash. But there's but all the people that are being a little more speculative about it or people that aren't paying cash that wanted to just put a normal 20 25 percent down it's not cash flowing so i guess i have a couple of thoughts first off i'm happy to hear that meaning that investors aren't gambling because something i've been saying for a while now is 
financial engineers, a.k.a. speculators, have been doing bad deals. So it sounds like, at least in this example or these two examples, bad deals have stopped being done. 8% mortgage rates have stopped the bad deals. Great. Now what we need to figure out is the demand side, yeah. right? And what I think we're seeing, at least in the one example of 20 out of 200, there's just too much supply or not enough demand or both. And what we're wow. seeing is operators probably looking for daily rates, probably getting occupancy, probably from air DNA or like platform. And they're like, huh, my mortgage is three grand. Projected income is two grand. I don't want what I call an alligator, right? From my first book. Right. So um, then I guess the question I have is, okay, this goes owner occupant. Yay. Cool. What happens to the other 20? Because in my opinion, what we're seeing is 20 is too many. Yep. So do five of those have to go long-term rental? Do five of those have to get sold to owner occupants? Because there's some number that works for demand, but 20 is too many. That's that's what I think I'm piecing together in this example. Right. And it's going to, it takes time for these things to work out in the wash. They always do, but it takes probably a couple of years for it to wash out. I would think, you know, because I, th I think some people, people are going to reach their conclusions at different points along yes. the way. Some people are going to be more resilient than others. Some people are just, it's just a game for, it's just whatever, you know, it's fine. It's just a little hobby, a sideline. And for others, if it's their bread and butter and they can't, or they have a mortgage they need to support and it's not working, they may have to sell sooner. Um, there's right. barely anything for sale. There's only one other similar property for sale in that area that was an Airbnb and that one's still on the market. But, you know, I think there is a pressure to reduce the nightly rate, but then it becomes sometimes a race for the bottom. If everyone's doing that, then exactly. it gets to, yeah. And, and occupancy, I checked, you know, when I was looking when this one was on the market and also for my own in that area, I'm looking to see what are the bookings looking like? Cause you just click on the calendar and you can just see which ones are booked and which ones aren't. Hmm. And I am seeing a lot more, I'm seeing more vacancies across the board. I think a lot of people are traveling, getting on a plane and traveling rather than just driving yeah. for the weekend getaways. Um, and it is a little bit seasonal too, you know, fall is a slower season for us. I know summer is busy and winter is busy and the spring fall, not so busy. Um, but there, I am seeing some, it's most, the ones that are professionally managed tend to be at the higher rates, but then sometimes some people are just like, well, I'm just going to drop my people that are managing themselves might tend to drop it lower to get the occupancy higher. But then there's some pitfalls to that too. So, yeah. um, but I am seeing occupancy down. And so the, the, the numbers are going to be get more challenging to work for people. And I just think that the, the gleam is off the Airbnb. Yeah. The bloom is off the rose. Yes. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So it's the, the appeal is not as strong as it once was yeah. because the easy money is not easy. there. Now, granted, there's going to be some people in other our markets are going to say we're booked solid. Hey, bravo. That's good awesome. for you. I'm happy for that. Yeah. But for for others yeah. that are just trying to make it work in an oversaturated market with prices high and interest rates high, that's a tough road to go. So yeah. I think the people that are going to do the best are the ones maybe kind of like us that are buying a second home to enjoy. And if you want to have someone else supplement that for you, yeah. great. But even for ours well, that I bought five, six years ago, I'm not necessarily looking to for that to be a cash cow. Mm -hmm. But if it can offset its own cost, I'm happy. That's my yeah. yardstick. So yeah. Well, I don't know if you saw it, but Airbnb CEO said he wants hosts to lower rates. He said that. He said that. Yesterday. I heard that on your uh, daily financial news this morning, and like, kind of gave me a chuckle a little bit. Like, oh yeah, you don't say. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Lower your fees, buddy. <laughs> But that's, that's part of it too. It's like these Airbnbs, they get nickel and people are getting nickel and dimed by two exactly. minutes and they're going back to hotels more. Exactly. Well, Beth, you do an amazing job. You bring us the truth each and every week. Also, you do referrals to other agents across the country. How can people get one of those? Yeah. So people can reach out to me through BethTraversoGroup.com or just message me on social media. And you can also find me in the One Rental at a Time Facebook group. So awesome. look forward to connecting with people there. Thank you so much.